Hello and welcome to the Future Couch. Today our topic is supply chains, and I have two experts here with me, Christian Maassen and Tim Hammer. Christian Maassen is a partner at Diticon Consulting and head of hyperconnectivity. Tim Hammer is the managing director on, at Hammer Advanced Logistics. Thank you so much for both being here. I have an important question for you guys. I'm wondering, is globalization coming to an end as we have so many problems with our supply chains at the moment? We are dealing with war, we're dealing with a pandemic, we're dealing with so many unforeseen challenges that I'm wondering, is this it? Tim, what do you think? What are you worried about at the moment? Yes, I am. Uh I think we have uh, gone through a great deal of problems with the supply chains in the, in the last two years. I mean, we have had a lot of factors that um, deregulated the, the global supply chain. We have had the pandemics that you just mentioned. We have had the, the Chinese harbors closing for weeks. Then um, when we're finally starting to recover, um, a ship got stuck in the Suez Canal and, 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 and kind of started all this process. Um, over again, and, and it's certainly difficult to actually deliver and to be performant um, in the same terms as, as the supply chain was performing before, because a couple of years ago, it was all about performance, efficiency and, and cost. Now it's mostly about getting the good at the right place uh, at the right time, but that's not the, the standards that we want to, to look up for. Um, we want actually to go back to, to a regulated supply chain um, where everything works quite uh, smoothly. Hopefully not even get back to the level we were before, but even reach higher levels, right? <laughs> we will yeah. see. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> For the moment it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What are you worried about? Yeah, um, might be worried about the same thing, that we might uh, stagnate at where we are, because ah, now we fixed it, kind of, somehow it worked, um, but that was, won't solve it for the next time. So we actually have to go one step further, so we have to look at ah, what went wrong. And uh, to a certain degree, that's the positive news, I think, is uh, something's changed. We go further into digitization because we basically didn't see any other way how to do it, to create that kind of transparency you need, to have an idea what's going on at the moment, uh, what could we do uh, if a situation comes like that, or even minor ones yeah. in a daily business. You have also have to make the decisions, but you want to do it based on facts, based on data, based on what's actually happening. Yeah. And if you know what's happening, you can do that. You can deal with it. It's good to have the alternatives ready. Uh, I, I agree on that. <clears throat> and, and even though it's difficult, um, because sometimes there really are no good alternatives, but still it is, it is always good to have a, an overview of, of the possibilities. Yeah. You mentioned digitization. Um, I believe the crisis, the corona pandemic, has shown us that ad hoc supply chains can work amazingly well, right? Without cutting edge technology. What do you think, Tim? Well, I don't <laughs> think they, they worked amazingly well. I, I think <laughs> they worked actually very badly. If you look at the development of the, the cost for C freight, um, it's, it's something that is very, very difficult to, to understand and it's so, something that is also costing a lot to our economy. And, um, and probably this is also leading a lot of, of customers or a lot of, of producers or, or um, organization to, to rethink their globalization approach and to actually um, try to, to reduce this, um, this cost by trying to, to go over to local sourcing again. And this is a trend that have come up after, after the, um, the pandemic start two years ago, and, and it, which is still actually going on. So this pandemic might actually be one factor that um, pushes companies to, to, to source locally again at some point. You mentioned a very good point. Yes, it does cost a lot, and I believe factories cannot just build up from scratch and do an amazing product and do amazing supply chains. So how does that shift work? How do you solve that dilemma? And you know, turn old, um, old supply chains that may not work anymore, um, how do you make them deal with these challenges that we have right now? Yeah, I think it's it's certainly difficult to rebuild an economy that we outsource to to Asia, 
Um, and it's especially difficult to, to do it because the, the cost of production are, are much higher here than they are abroad. And um, well, I, I think one way to actually try to, to compensate is, is to increase the productivity and, and to control costs better. And, um, and for, for ourselves, we are looking into increasing the efficiency through um, better use of our data and better understanding of, of how our processes work, how they perform, um, and, and what can be actually improved to actually save um, or, or reduce our cost of our services that we offer. So data and transparency, that's your biggest hope to solve the dilemma. Yeah, I think it's, it's a big part of, of our hopefully bright future. <laughs> hopefully. Christian, do you think that is the way to go? I think so. And we still have the challenge to do it at a running start because kind of you won't stop all your operations for a week, a month or whatever it takes us just to see, okay, now it works. We tested it, all fine. We have to do it basically while it's all running, still running and implement it. And we can't do it, as you said, uh, from scratch. That might be nice. Push everything aside, all what we had in legacy systems, legacy IT and so on might make it easier from point, time to time, uh, but actually we have this heterogeneous landscapes we have to work with. So it's always, as we call it, brownfield, always an integration project. We have to see what fits. How do we make it better step by step? Because um, also in our discussions, um, there's always something you can do functionally because we have basically all the building blocks technology-wise at the moment you could use. You just have to know how to put it together, then it will work. But uh, someone will hold you accountable, for example, a client like Tim, uh, and saying, yeah, okay, but please let it be economic as well, because it should be a business case we're talking about. So build it step by step and not just give me the newest, the best, the shiniest. Um, what works with me? What can I do next, actually, to get to this big Olymp uh, we are aiming for? And um, can I start directly with AI, uh, for example, to do that kind of yeah, automated process, which also fixes itself, would be nice. Um, you have to do the groundwork. You have to fix the basics first, and that's dealing with all the different stacks of technology. You have to get your IoT right, you have to get your connectivity right, your data processing. You have to make decisions where, if to go cloud, edge, whatever comes next, to actually get to the running and a economic system. So a few yeah, uh, levers you have to push. Yeah. So you're basically saying, technologically speaking, everything is solvable and we have a solution for everything. But implementation is the challenge we're facing right now. What exactly is a challenge? Is it because we have like a shortage of skilled workers or how, how do we go about the implementation process? Yeah, I, th I think <clears throat> one challenge is that um, a lot of, of the, the concepts that we're working on right now and that are evolving in, in, in our modern economies is are fairly at the beginning of the journey. And um, there is no real standard in, in a lot of, of, of these um, approaches. And, and we do a lot of trial and error, actually, and try to be pragmatic and, and, and to see, to look at what is working, what is not working, and, and trying to, to eat the, the, the problem bite by bite, chew it down, and, and, and go from there. And this is also binding a lot of resources because of this, this lack of standard. And my expectation or my hope is that um, the solution matures over time and, and that actually the amount of resource that you need to put in there will hopefully decrease. I don't know how you see it, Christian, but uh, it's usually the, the, the cycle technologies goes under. Yeah, usually, and it's quite fast paced. Um, so you have to keep track on it. And I think uh, for someone running a business, that might not be the top priority usually, or it's hard to uh, explain it to your clients later on. Uh, sorry, I had to study 5G, IoT and whatever, uh, when we can deal with your problem. Um, so it's rather that question um, to get hold, to get still the idea of all the technologies, what works together, what goes in. Uh, what has a positive e effect and still understanding the business side to bring these both together, kind of, so that it really works. So, yes, we have the building blocks, but um, as you said it, we need also the people who can actually work with that. Uh, with that kind of construction block system, they need to know 
the requirements from the industry side, might it be logistics, manufacturing, whatever, uh, really understand what is needed, um, what is required there to make it work. And on the other side, know all about the technologies, um, if they're new, if they're old, RFID, blockchain, uh, maybe um, AI and whatever it is, and then find the right fit. So it's also a kind of education challenge we are facing uh, on that part, building these new systems with, with this new uh, industry data scientists, uh, whatever experts uh, we're looking for, but we have to qualify on the job. And yeah, this is kind of a big knowledge management task ahead of us. Definitely, that sounds like a very hard task. Um, I'm wondering what the end goal is, technologically speaking. So once you have these people, those few experts that you can work with and you know show them the ropes, but what is the end goal? Is it automation? Is it making everything work seamlessly? That, that would be nice if we get to that <laughs> point. Yeah. Um, but uh, also to get to that stage, you need someone who can design it, who can think about it, who can adjust it and still build up on that. Because automatization, you have it uh, already um, in the logistics center, for example, you need to find the people. If you can't find the people, you still want to grow. What you do, you have to find the resources otherwise or that kind of efficiency to deal with it. So that's where we stand at the moment, also at that point. Yeah, this is a, from my standpoint, this is a big, a big, big problem. I mean, we, we really have trouble to find qualified workers and I mean, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And if we want to, to actually produce uh, some goods, some products in, in, in Central Europe, we need to find alternative ways. And it's, in, it's certainly not a, a matter of um, trying to, to, um, to get rid of employees in, in, in some way. It's the matter of making the most out of them. And, and if I, I look at my business, which is logistics, um, it is so that a lot of people are, are managing the, the, the normal case, the day-to-day -day business. And I think it's, it's just a waste of time. The people should be managing the, the unpredictable. They should be managing the anomalies. And, um, and everything that, that is in balance should be actually um, uh, automized and, 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 and not be a concern to people. So I think it's, it's a way to look at, at what we call the, the augmented age, right? Like the, the computer augmenting the, the, the people. And um, I, I think it's, it's also a much more valuable uh, task for, for the people to do than, than to run this, this normal operations. Uh, day to day. I wholeheartedly agree. I think that sounds way more interesting for somebody to do. Um, leave that to the machines, the boring work. Maybe one more last question for you. I mean, we talked about transparency, we talked about optimization, we talked about, you know, bringing these skills to a workplace that is developing as we speak, you know. Any last words on the topic supply chains? Anything that we haven't talked about? Christian, maybe you? Yeah, maybe um, what we are still missing. So you uh, basically caught all the building blocks we are talking about. But one uh, especially we would need for that uh, is a kind of courage for innovation. Mm -hmm. So that we go the next step, that we try it, even if no one has done it before. It might be just a small step, but we are hesitating quite often to do that. Uh, we might see some benefits, but we would like to see the benefits um, basically taken care of by someone else first and then, okay, it worked there, now we can do it. The problem is, is if no one starts. So would like to have that shift in mindset. We see it slowly uh, uh, also in Germany because of the crisis uh, we had before. So we have to do something. So now it might be there, it might be a chance uh, to deal with it. I would like to look forward to that we get that and get that rolling. But I think uh, you told me it's also a necessity, actually. Yeah, and the problem is we don't look hard enough. Because, I mean, it's, it's sure in Germany you have the feeling, okay, that's uh, probably some, some cutting edge field of, of technology and, and I have time to, to actually grow into it. If you look at other countries, you look at, at America, at the US, you look at, at China, they are far beyond our uh, standpoint of technology. And it's, it's just sad that we close our eyes and, and think that everything is going to go um, well because 
it has been in the past. So I think it's, it's more than time to actually um, try to be more innovative. And um, everybody in, 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 in his industry, in, in his field of activities, can find ways to actually um, sustain innovation and, and be part of it. And, and I think those who don't do will certainly um, have very hard times to come. Yeah. Thank you so much for these great last remarks. I do believe that everybody can be a part of it, as you said wonderfully, Tim. Um, this is a task for all of us. So we heard so much today about courage, about technology, about having transparency to improve our supply chains for the future. If you liked this Future Couch session, I'm pretty sure you're going to like the other sessions too. So check them out and tune in. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you so much, Christian, for being here. This was awesome having you. What a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>